so you remember last week you sent uh, Grady um, a whole bunch of treats? Yes. Did he figure out the treat mills? Sort of. Uh oh. Um, for one thing, I've had to cut him off on treats. <laughs> Instead of every day, it's every other day because he's getting a little, yeah. Little, little chubster. Little chubster. And this is all that's left. Oh no! He took his head. I can't find the head of this thing. <laughs> he figured it out all right. Instead of trying to knock it over, he yanked its head off. They do that when it gets low and they can't knock it over enough to get the last few treats out. They'll knock its head off. It was completely full. He took its head off. Wow. That was his first go-to. They get... don't usually do that till it's almost empty and they can't get those last few. And then they... Then they get the last. Well, Grady just said fuck it and decapitated the son of a bitch. I respect that. Do we have the Black Lodge as our background now? I just, I got, I got, oh, you're just now seeing it. I, 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 I updated the background a wee bit. Cool. I thought, you know, we've been using the same one for like, what, five years now? Something like that. And I thought, uh, we could, we could do something different now. Never, I never made this my, my Twin Peaks room. This was supposed to be my Twin Peaks room, and now we're, we're going to be moving, and I never did that. Oh, well. Where are you, Grady? Where are you? I'm worried when I don't know where you are. <laughs> Any minute, you're going to hear the telltale. I hear him. He's around here somewhere. There you are. There you are, goofball. What are you doing? It's like, it's like people... I don't need to, I had my damn cat destroyed my camera this week. I don't need kids. Kids are worse, and this little bastard managed to kill a $600 camera, so. How? How? Uh, well, short version was, I was updating the firmware on the camera to change some of the options on it. And it, whenever you update firmware on a device, you know, if your phone ever tells you, don't turn off your device while this is updating. Right. Um, it was plugged into the wall, and... He attacked the cord. Oh, dear. And I found out what happens if you turn off your device while you're updating. What happens? It doesn't he work anymore. Oh. So you don't go to the upside down. No, you don't go to the upside down. You end up having to send it off to a certified repair center. You go to the Best Buy. And spend $200 oh. to replace the motherboard and the camera because that's the only way to fix it. But you know what the important thing is? Grady is sweet and you love him. Yeah, if you say so, sure. Peggy knocked over a whole big glass of ice water on me today. But, you know. Was it a $200 bot of ice water? It was not, but she's trying real hard to murder Dan's Xbox. <laughs> yes, we are moving again. We're staying in Jersey. We're just, we're going from renters to owners. Yeah, she, there's a window near where the Xbox is, and she likes to sit in that window and then exit the window and sit on the Xbox and look at Dan until he yells at her a lot. So. Well, let's... We have news. Let's do the news. Do you want to do the nonsense? Each week, Catherine... Radio Dead audience go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And am I, am I too loud again? No, I, I don't think I'm too loud. No, I, I, I rebuilt this entire project file from scratch to make sure we got our noise problem sorted. Because the levels were going all over the place. It was making yeah. me very sad. It was a weekly adventure. So, um, speaking of weekly adventures, um, this is, I think this is officially going to become a segment now because this guy is just, he's perfect. Oh, is it This Week in Spicer? This Week in Spicer. That, that's an option. I, I like owning Sean Spicer better, but This Week in Spicer. I hear, I know you're still mad at SNL and I respect that, but they had Melissa McCarthy do him this week and holy Phrasing. shit. Phrasing. Well. Phrasing. Know, it was a goddamn masterpiece. Like, probably the best sketch of the last couple of years that they've done. It was amazing. 
<laughs> well, and the reason they had such such fertile ground to work with is that Sean Spicer is a human disaster. Sean Spicer, of course, is the U.S. White House press secretary. Uh, also, Nuts. I learned this as well. He is also the White House uh, chief of, uh, of communications. He's doing two jobs at the same time because the previous guy who they got lined up for the job um, resigned because he was having an affair and he got caught on Twitter. Um, but... Right. So now Spicer is doing both of those jobs. Um, there was a lot to choose from this week, but I think what I'm going to focus on is Frederick Douglass. Do you know who Frederick, Frederick Douglass was? Yes. And I know that he's not with us anymore. He is not. He was a uh, figure in um, black history. Abolitionist. Say what? Lawyer, right? He was an abolitionist. Abolitionist. Lawyer. Very important figure in history. 122 years ago. Which means he is deceased. He is no longer with us unless, of course, he is a Time Lord or a Highlander. Or a cyborg. I, any three of those would be wonderful television show pitches, by the way. <laughs> would be. But. Frederick Douglass, cyborg. I'm going to report this directly from the, uh, the White House. This is from WhiteHouse.gov. This is the, the transcript of his press briefing. Yeah. I watched this live. It was This yeah. was fantastic. Um on the subject after earlier in the day, Donald Trump had said a bunch of weird shit about Frederick Douglass. He's doing a great job and getting noticed more and more. This was um when asked about it, question from the press. Today he made a comment about Frederick Douglass being recognized more and more. Do you have any idea what specifically he was referring to? Now, this is the softball. This is yeah. giving Sean Spicer a way to spin this yeah. and make Trump look like less of a complete Nimrod. And all you had to do to, 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 to slam dump this was Google. All you had to do. But no, no, this is a quote. This is, this is Mr. Spicer. Quote, well, I think there's contribution. I think he wants to highlight the contributions he has made. And I think through a lot of the actions and statements that he's going to make, I think the contributions of Frederick Douglass will become more and more. Now, for one thing, this is not a sentence. No. This is sort of what happens if two sentences end up at a, at a highway and one of them runs a stop sign. Yeah. And that's what happens. This is what happens if you throw a bunch of sentences up in the air and then they all land on the floor. And you try to put them back together again with scotch tape? Yeah. 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 You want your Santa? Are you not getting him? I'm sorry. He has her little Santa. If he likes to bite his face, I say it's because he looks like Dan. <laughs> so, but in space. so, so where we are right there now, let's, let's try to deconstruct this gobbledygook. His contributions are going to be more and more. Are you going to go dig up Fred Douglas? Apparently they already have. They've got fucking zombie Frederick Douglas in the Roosevelt room writing executive orders as we fucking speak. Amazing. How, how do you fuck up this bad? I mean, they probably think he's one of the Patriots that just won the Super Bowl. I, I will bet you cash money that when the Super Bowl, what, that when the Patriots go to the White House for their photo op, he's going to be like, where's Frederick Douglass? Is Frederick Douglass here? And we're going to be explaining how that never happened. Because that's where we are now. That's where we are now. Apparently these people are saying there's an echo. Let me see here. I get really jealous of these cats because they don't have to worry about any of this bullshit. They just have to worry about if their bowl is full... And if Dan's moving around too much for them to sit in his lap. This, I just, it, motherfucker, you know? Could we make zombie Frederick Douglass president? 
because I feel like he would do a better job. There's there's nothing in the Constitution that says... I mean, nothing says the president can't be a zombie, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, nothing, nothing says... I think we should look into that. Zombie Douglas 2020. <sighs> anyway. Moving on to our normal nonsense. We just had the Super Bowls. We did. The 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 bowls of the super and and Lady Gaga won. Lady Gaga. I I didn't even what what did she do? I, she jumped off of something? She jumped off the top of the stadium. And that, that part apparently was pre-taped. She stood on top of the stadium and she had a bunch of little tiny drones that formed an American flag. Um, and then she sang God Bless America and This Land is Your Land, which is like a super subtweet, subversive message. Vanity Fair covered it. Look it up. And then she jumped. And that apparently up to the point where she jumps off the top of the stadium was pre-taped. I'd like to point out Woody Guthrie's This Land, doing This Land is Your Land is going back a ways. I, Gaga did not get there first, but. Well, no, but that the, it was written yeah. as like, you know. Yeah. So, um. Then, then, you know, she came down and basically did a medley of her greatest hits, and it was amazing. Well, one of, one of the other things, this, the advent um, coming up for the Super Bowl, you, you have your Super Bowl, you have your beer, you have your snacks. Tostitos decided they wanted to provide snacks for the people and also be, be contributors to their society in... Probably one of the weirdest and most did no one think this through sort of ways I've ever seen. Tostitos party safe bags. I heard about this. Will detect if you have been drinking, help you call Uber. Yeah. Adweek reports that Tostitos and Uber, along with Mothers Against Drunk Driving, created Liberty Time party safe bags that can detect if a snacker has been drinking and assist in getting the party reveler home safe. The bags, which are outfitted with sensors, are able to detect any trace of alcohol on a person's breath. No alcohol is found, the bag turns green, as in, go ahead and head home. The bag detects alcohol, it turns red, shows the message, don't drink and drive, and offers the snacker a $10 Uber credit to get home safe on February 5th. It's unclear how many Uber discount codes the bag will provide, the bag is also equipped with near-field communication technology, allowing the user to tap their phone against the bag to call Uber. However, and the, 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 the article does point this out, it is not an actual breathalyzer, should not be used by party goers to determine if they can actually drive home. I feel like... If you're at a party and you find yourself breathing into your bag of Tostitos to see if you're drunk, you've already answered the question. Yeah. Like, <laughs> into your chips and salsa. Yeah. You probably just shouldn't drive. You shouldn't. Like, just, I, you know. I also I want to point out that this is... Also, I feel it's weird. I don't want my chips making calls for me. Like... <laughs> All right, let's, let's break this down. Number one, how much did developing this bag cost? Right? How much does it cost extra to the, to the bag of Tostitos to include near-field communication sensors and a not breathalyzer? It's like $15 a bag. And in addition to that, it's not... This is giving people the very wrong impression that this will be able to easily determine if you're safe to drive home. Right, which, no. I'm waiting to find out how many false negatives this thing gave. Is the bag green? <sighs> yep, I can drive. Um, what happens if you're red-green colorblind? The bag says... What happens if you don't know the fucking difference between red and green, which a lot of people don't? The bag says... The bag says, um, cool. 
<laughs> you know what the next logical step is going to be. You're going to have a motherfucking bag of chips that uses your fucking saliva to calculate your BMI and tell you when to stop eating. And that's at which point I find a fucking chip CEO and fire his shit into the sun. This, you this, know it's coming. You know the fat shaming is coming with the chips. I just, it, it's one of those things that it's just like, stop putting all the technology into the things. We don't need smart snacks. Like, the smart shit we already have is enough trouble. I know. This like, will make. Enough. We live in homes full of transformers, basically. This will make your life easier. No, it doesn't. This shit's more complicated. But I don't, I don't need my potato chips to make judgments. Like one of the grossest Super Bowl ads, and they keep running it on Twitter, is the guy, he's reaching into the Doritos and licking his fingers and reaching back into the bag, and the chick just tells Amazon to order more Doritos, and a drone comes and drops Doritos on her doorstep. I hate that ad because it's gross, and I keep seeing it on Twitter, and it's disgusting, and I want to stop seeing it. That gross guy licking his stupid fingers. But also, like, you know me. Like, I'm not comfortable with the robotification of society. Like, I don't trust the fucking robots, man. Think about this. This There's a simpler solution. Amazon to send a little fucking robot to there, my door to murder me. There were two it, solutions to this problem. One... You split the bag of Doritos into two different bowls. Yeah. Or two, you summon a robot from the sky to bring you more Doritos. Tara, if you're wondering when to stop eating chips, the answer is yesterday. Thank you for your concern. Oh. So, more... F oh, this is... Uh, speaking of stuff that's going to get feedback... Fuck these guys. Open carry advocates. These fucking guys. Oh, yeah. I can have a gun anywhere! Yay! Those guys will call you a snowflake, but can't go to Starbucks without an AK. I really like this next story because it's one of those, we have the right to do this! And reality says, no, you don't. <laughs> and it made me happy. Um... This comes from Michigan. Masked open carry advocate arrested after carrying rifle into police station. Two men were arrested Sunday after they... I don't know the answer to our police station's gun free zones. Because they all have them. Two men were arrested Sunday after they entered the Dearborn Police Department openly carrying firearms. One of the men wore a black mask a bullet-resistant vest and had a military-style rifle uh, that makes people jumpy slung over his shoulder. The incident was live-streamed on Facebook and later posted on YouTube before entering. The man filming says in the video they intended to file a complaint claiming they were illegally pulled over. Were they afraid the cops were going to shoot them? I... All shit. Even if you get to walk around with a gun, you don't get to walk around with a gun and body armor and a mask. Is that sends a certain message, <sighs> and that message makes people kind of fucking jumpy. Speaking, this is what quote from this is from a police officer said this quote, dude. Oh, hi. <laughs> you hear that? I did from police officer quote dude put that on the ground an officer could her be saying shortly after the two men entered the police station put it on the ground or you are dead i will shoot you i will put a round in you sir the camera goes to the ground the screen goes black the officers continue ordering the man to drop both the rifle and another handgun it's all legal sir one of the men is heard saying that's great put it the fuck down it's i can legally do this Here's the thing. I'd like to remind you all of the great Dr. Ian Malcolm. You were so busy worrying about whether or not you could. You didn't stop to think whether or not you should. I'm proving a point that I have the right to do this thing in America, and I'm not considering the consequences of doing this thing whatsoever. 
Like maybe you can legally cover yourself in peanut butter and have your dog lick your balls at the public pool. I don't know what kind of housing development you live in. Maybe you're allowed to do that. It doesn't mean you should. I think that technically do. I think that technically is still legal in Alabama. Or is it well, Arkansas? One of the A states. Technically it's legal to be a complete asshole to everybody. Doesn't mean it's an okay thing to do. Doesn't mean you should do it. I can I have the right to do this. That that's not that's, that's that yeah. Mental. Oh, we have another, should you have done this, god damn, this fucking guy. 74 years old, this fucking guy. Never let it be said that the old hippies have ever grown the fuck up. Man, 74, gave out hash cookies at mass. At mass? <laughs> Oh my god. A 70 year, 74 year old man has been charged with distributing chocolate chip cookies laced with hash oil to fellow parishioners at an Indiana church. Like, on one hand, that's so not okay. On the other hand, what a fucking boss. <laughs> Police this week announced that misdemeanor charges have been filed against Brian Jones in connection with an incident last year at the St. John the Apostle Catholic Church in Bloomington, Indiana. Jones, seen it right, is facing two criminal char char uh, two misdemeanor counts, criminal re recklessness and possession of hash oil. It's included in the police report. Seven individuals fell ill, uh, fell ill shortly after consuming Jones' homemade cookies, which he handed out at the conclusion of a 9.15 a.m. Sunday service. All the victims, cops noted, sought treatment at the emergency room where their symptoms included nausea, lethargy, anxiety, elevated blood pressure, and paranoia. Oof. He did not tell them. Yeah, like, dude, I was raised Catholic. Nobody could use to chill the fuck out with a good joint more than the Catholics. I'm sorry, Pope Francis, I love him, but the Catholics could use this, but you should... You can't spring that shit on people. That's not okay. <laughs> yeah, you you gotta you, you consent is kind of an issue here. You can't just be like surprise, it's drugs. But somebody there was like, "Wow, my glaucoma is cured." <laughs> it's a miracle. Jesus. No, no drugs. No, just the cookies. Maybe, though, Jesus told him to make you those cookies. The Lord works in mysterious ways. I just, it, it's, don't, don't do that. The Pope's probably cool with people on the toke. He probably is. I don't think Pope Francis is going to split hairs over pot. Just, they're, they're kind of more important moral issues in the world. It's, it's nice that you wanted to share. You That's just. Of you. Sharing is caring. Hey, do you want some drug cookies? That's all you had to do is ask. Yeah. Some of those people yeah. might have said, sure, I want some drug cookies. Hell. You can't. And it doesn't sound like he did a good job making them. No. Because they shouldn't make you sick, as far as I understand. Like, I haven't ate, eaten ingestibles with the pot. But I feel like if you did the right, if you made them right, they wouldn't make people sick. I sometimes I have stories. How would we slurp the food while I'm on the air? We love to do that. Sometimes I have stories on here that I. Wow. This is one of those where I have absolutely no fucking idea what the fuck. How did we get here? You know that meme going around? Well, that's me. You probably wondered how I got into this. Yeah. This this is the epitome of that. Um, blind Tyrone man caught in cattle barn and... with rubber glove and broom shaft. Okay. Uh, uh, intending to damage cattle. 
This is the blind man uh, caught by a farmer in a cattle barn wearing a baklava, uh, oh. balaclava, baklava, that's food, balaclava, that's, that's a face mask, balaclava, a vet's rubber, and you know what, a baklava would have made just as much sense in this, a vet's rubber inspection glove and carrying a wooden brush shaft. A completely bizarre incident came to light last week at the uh, Omaha Crown Court where 44-year-old Anthony Morris of Bradkeel Road in Plumbridge was found guilty of intending to cause damage to cattle and theft after a one-day tri trial. Uh, Morris was discovered by a farmer who had gone to investigate noises in his barn. He had tried to hide, but the farmer and his brother caught Morris in a cattle pen and pinned him down until police arrived. While he was being held, Morris, who had a torch strapped to his head and also carrying blue rope and a pen knife, put on a foreign accent and said, quote, Mimi steal ear tags. Mimi look at tags. Okay. When police arrived, they unmasked Morris, who the farmer recognized because he'd done work for him in the past. He's also wearing a body warmer stolen from the fa farmer's lorry weeks earlier, but he denied this too. During the so trial, the farmer recognized him and he still tried the no speak of the English. Yep. yep. During his trial, Morris came up with a host of weird and wonderful excuses for his actions in the cattle barn. Morris's crazy claims include, quote, his, his balaclava, <laughs> fuck you, his balaclava made from the leg of an old tracksuit bottoms was, quote, a face warmer he had lifted by mistake instead of his woolen cap. Well, you know what I'm thinking in my head right now. What? What? Are you sure? Your old bikini. <laughs> what, what was the guy? David Delarocco made his own balaclava, and they were making fun of him. <laughs> Remember that. The wooden shaft was to help him keep his balance because medication made him dizzy. The rubber glove was already in the body warmer, and he used it to clean fungi out of a water barrel. And he always carries a pen knife to open food for his 17 cats. Okay. What the fuck happened here? Uh, I... I... You know, if I'm a farmer and I go out to my barn and I find this makeshift superhero wearing his own costume with like a stick and a pen knife, and pretending not to speak English, and that's the point I'm like, maybe farming was a bad choice. Because <laughs> they, they prepared me for, for flood, famine, locusts. They did not fucking prepare me for this crazy motherfucker screwing with my cows. First the fucking Avengers land a Quinjet in your corn crop. And then this bullshit. Who needs this shit? This... I, I can't even make sense of this. I really cannot even make sense of this. Well, you know, the Irish, we're a, we're a strange people sometimes. Sometimes. Hey, shut up, you dirty Brit. Sometimes. You don't get to make fun of Irish people because you are descended from the oppressor. Well, hey, speaking of the English, we got a good one for for Dan now. Oh, good. Just complete and utter stupidity. So, um, <laughs> you would expect if you go to the police for help, they will help you. Um, not accidentally blow up your car. Okay. Workington police blow up suspicious car parked by fellow officers. <laughs> police force carried out a controlled explosion on a suspicious car outside a station, not realizing its own officers had parked it there. Bomb squad was called after concerns about an unattended Vahal Corsa at Workington Police Station, uh, Cumbria. Uh, the roads around the building in Hall Brow were sealed off and an explosion was carried out 8 a.m. GMT. 
Force apologized, the force blamed, quote, an internal communications error and apologized to the owner. Apologize to the owner. We are terribly sorry. We blew your car the fuck up. That's very nice. Is that apology to buy me a new fucking car? <laughs> what kind of car can that apology buy me? The uh, police said other officers on duty were not aware colleagues had parked the car outside the station after helping its owner, who had been taken ill. Did it not occur to anybody to be like, Oi! Anybody park a car out there? My accent's terrible. Your accent Just, is horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. I don't do This is why I don't do accents. Didn't occur to anybody to be like, hey, did anybody, anybody park a car out there? Whose car yeah. is this? Does anyone know about... Jimmy? Okay, cool. Then we won't blow it up. How is that the go-to? <laughs> that is a weird car out there I don't, I don't recognize. Well, do, we better blow that shit up. Do you not get the bomb sniffing dogs out? Do you not... Don't you have any sort of bomb detection gear before you jump straight to... Let's blow it up. Now, just... Let's go Run to the... the plate run the plate maybe yeah let's go to the worst case scenario here let's run the plate, maybe check the plate versus any f reports filed today let's go to the, the far extreme worst case scenario let's just say this car had been there for a nefarious purpose let's say it had a trunk full of anthrax oh god and you just blew it up Congratulations! See, my worst case scenario, I was thinking, like, what if this car was a crime scene because a body was found in it and you just wrecked all the evidence? That's an awesome idea, too. That's like, how do we get rid of this evidence? We'll let the cops... Likes to go to sleep watching forensic files. So... We'll let the police do it for us. We'll let them... <laughs> They'll get rid of the evidence for us. Just park it in their lot. They'll blow it the fuck up. I mean, I can understand. It's a fucking crazy world out there lately. I get that. Yes. But to jump straight to, we solve our problems with explosives. Seems a bit excessive. Now you have to, to apologize. Someone can sue you. They've got grounds to sue you. They apologize to the owner. Yeah. Like, cool. I Thanks. know. I know it is much harder to sue people. ride to work, though? <laughs> I know it's much harder to sue people in England, but this, when the police parked the car themselves. Yeah, I don't think this falls under frivolous lawsuit. No, no, no. You're, you're. I think you've got a case here. You're buying them a new car and you're not buying them one of the little cars. Mm -hmm. You're not buying them one of the tiny British cars. You're buying them one of the big British cars, which is a tiny American car. Right. They don't really go in for the giant cars over there. I could, I've, I've been there, man. It, even they're really big cars. I could like get outside and like, you know, like one of those little run cars you put on the, on the car. The of Obama's presidential limo, which they nicknamed the beast, trying to pull out of 10 Downing Street. Did you ever see that footage? <laughs> I did not. It's, it's the president. I guess they shipped the presidential limo over to transport him while he was in over there. Oh, yeah. That motherfucker had to make like a 250 point turn to get off of Downing Street. Because <laughs> the roads over there are not built for no, our no. our weird fetishization of fossil fuels. Yeah, we have boats over here. Yeah, like they're not they're not equipped for that bullshit. <laughs> so if you ever if you ever have a minute and you want to laugh, look it up. They just like it took forever to get that car and like it like it was a great day for America. I guess our, our first, the first thing we learned this week is, is your go-to first solution should not be explosives. You hear that? Maybe ask around first, maybe check with your, your co-workers. Don't just jump to, well, we better blow that fucker up. Boom. We've learned that farmers have some really strange problems that none of us else could really appreciate. Yeah. Unless we worked in porn, maybe. That's a really specific niche of porn. And yet, it probably has a following. Probably. We've learned before you share your drugs, let people know they are, in fact, drugs. It is so nice of you to share your drugs, but... 
let 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 people know. You, you you've got the sharing thing down, and I'm sure Jesus would be very happy with you that you're sharing. Oh. But we've learned that uh, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Jeff Goldblum was right. It was. And we've learned you should probably not entrust the safety of your sobriety to a Tostitos bag. <laughs> no. I really want to know, like, how much that fucking bag of Tostitos was, because it has to cost more. It has to. Like, that's not inexpensive technology. Well, near field... to throw it away. Well, near field chips are kind of cheap, all, all told. But still, it costs more than a bag of shit. Think about this fucking dystopian nightmare, though. A landfill filled with those little chips. And then when the machines rise, like, I don't know what happens there, but they have a whole landfill full of shit to choke us to death with. All the little bags will just roll over and kill us. And they'll be delivered by a fucking Amazon drone. Tara, your grasp of technology is truly unique. Whatever, you'll be sorry when I'm right. 